What's up guys, it's your boy Jordan, back with another video. And you guys have been blowing me up like crazy, asking me for more content about drop shipping and about having success with Shopify. So I wanted to revert back to the old style of content that I was making before, and I wanted to create a fully transparent blueprint on the exact strategy that I would follow if I was starting from scratch and wanted to make over 50K this Q4. As you guys already know, Q4 is the best season to begin promoting products on your store. As a matter of fact, last Q4, I made over $800,000 and that was really the peak of my store. I had been trying to build it the whole summer, so I really got it to pop off in that time frame. So if you've ever been interested in getting your store up and going, I would say there is no better time than right now. But it's a waste if you don't have the right strategy or the right blueprint to follow. So that's what I wanted to do for you guys today. So in just a little bit, we're gonna jump into my computer and I'm gonna break down this strategy for you guys in depth. If you like the quality of this content, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. Um, also, I just want to thank you guys. We just surpassed 15K subs. It's awesome. I appreciate every single one of you. And we're going to keep pushing because the goal for the end of the year is 25K subs. I know we can get to that point as long as I stay consistent and you guys keep sharing the videos. So let's get to it. But anyways, enough intro. I know you guys are ready for the content. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm trying a slightly different setup. Instead of using my webcam on my laptop, I just bought a new PC and I wanna start using the PC. So I'm just gonna record footage on my camera and then just kind of edit it and it will look cleaner too. So anyways, um, screen recording should be going as well. Everything's good. So let's talk about this. This is the blueprint that I put together, exactly what I would follow if I was trying to make 50K this Q4, starting from scratch. So I first wanted to start out with what I consider to be the prerequisites to all of this. Uh, firstly, you need to have a high quality, trustworthy store. None of this is going to work if you cannot set up a store that looks nice and is presentable. If you don't know how to do this, I have videos on it. There are tons of content out there on it. And if you're still struggling, I have a course that you can get into and figure that stuff out. Not here to promote the course, but if you are, that's what you can do. Once you have your store set up, uh, you need to be able to create good video ads. This is another prerequisite, and I see a lot of people have this as their main bottleneck when they're first charting out and trying to get some results coming in. The video ad is your first point of contact with your customer and really your first chance to introduce the level of quality that you're gonna be bringing with your brand. And if you're unable to create something that looks professional and is trustworthy, there's no possible way that your customer is ever gonna to wanna to click to your store or ever have the interest in the product in the first place. So this is the second prerequisite that I think is key. And if you don't know how to make video ads, I made a very in-depth tutorial on this on my channel a couple months back, so go ahead and watch that. Also, you need to have a little bit of a budget. People ask me all the time, like, hey, I have 100 bucks, can I start a business? No, there, there is literally no business out there that you can start for less than a couple hundred dollars. Now, there are hustles that you can do to get some more money coming in, like having a skill set and providing that skill set to the market. For example, video editing, copywriting, um, marketing, etc. But if you're trying to start and build a business, especially one that relies on paid traffic to get things going, you need a little bit of a budget. So I would say at a minimum, you should have $500 available and at the maximum, you know, above 2K. And it's way easier if you have a another side income coming in. So like I said, I highly suggest this and all my successful students or a good portion of them had all to do or all had to do this in the process. Just pick up a side hustle, something that can bring you in a little bit of money, whether it's just going out and getting a job like a regular person or just doing freelance work online to get a little bit of money coming in. So this is the prerequisites. This is the things that you need to have before any of this. And if you don't have these things, none of this is relevant and it's not going to work. So Let's keep moving forward. So I wanted to start out with product research because I felt like that was the most important aspect of this entire process. Um, and I wanna, before I go into the product research strategies themselves, explain to you guys what I consider to be like the prerequisites or need to know things about product research. 
Firstly, a lot of people are out here testing low ticket items and maybe a year ago, year and a half ago, low ticket items were the best thing to do because they could have that effect where people just impulse buy, impulse buy, impulse buy. But the thing about Facebook ads is there's more competition. It's a little bit more of a uh, competitive space and the costs are going to continue to rise. So if you can be testing products with a over $20 profit margin, it's gonna make things a million times easier for you because you can spend more money to acquire a customer and once you decide to scale or when you have something that's scalable, you'll be able to push it way faster um, with ease. So after you find products or just understand that you need to find products with this margin, you also need to understand that the products that you're looking for need to solve a problem and have mass appeal, ideally. The reason for this is because people really only like to buy problems or products that actually have a solution or something that's gonna benefit them in their daily life. Um, and especially if you're marketing the product on Facebook or on Instagram, it has to have something that catches them and makes them think that, hey, this product is gonna be really advantageous to have around, have in my life, and it needs to have that effect. And then on the topic of mass appeal, this just makes it way easier to scale your product. And if you're wanting a more um, comprehensive breakdown on like some of the factors that I look for when I'm testing products, you can go check out my previous videos on product research where I break this down a little bit more in depth, but I'll put some more down here. Basically, I look for problem solvers. I look for products that um, add convenience. I can't really spell. Um, I also look for products that will save people time slash money. I also like to look for products that can boost people's confidence. And that's pretty much the main like four things that I like to look for. There's a few other factors, but ultimately, um, this is the two that I'm always trying to find. And this is a good example product that I found here that fits on both of those criteria. So this is like a massager neck pillow. Essentially, this is a product that solves a problem. People have neck pain, people have discomfort, and it's also a product that has a high perceived value, so you can charge a little bit more money for it. So uh, to uh, fulfill this product costs about $30, so you could probably get away with selling this item for about $59.99 or so, and this would be a great product to test um, based off of these principles that I'm talking about. So this is just the prerequisite stuff. Stuff. We're gonna get into the strategies right now, but I felt that it was absolutely essential that we covered this stuff first and foremost. So what are the product research strategies that you need to be following? The reason why I started with product research is because once you have a store, um, this is the next step that you need to take. And if you're not building out a list of products before you get started, it's gonna be a longer process, it's gonna be a little more difficult. So um, I put these in order of importance, in my opinion. And the first strategy that I really like is spying or trend following. So there's a couple different ways to do this. Um, one of my favorite ways is to use an RSS feed tracker, which is essentially uh, a website that allows you to upload store links and then get a stream of every single product they upload immediately when it's posted. And I made a whole video about this. Uh, just look up like product research guide. It's like one of my most recent ones. And you're gonna be able to see how to set up comma feed and how to get that all integrated. But spying and trend following was one of my favorite ways to find new products to test. And it's one of the quickest ways too. You don't have to do too much work. You just need to import the top stores. The second thing that I like to do is using the Facebook and Instagram newsfeed to spot products. I've been talking about this for months and I still think it's a viable option. Um, the only thing about using the Facebook feed and finding products that are already like on the come up and going viral is you have to be creative in your approach of marketing those products because you have to understand that somebody else is already getting their piece of the pie of that product and you can't just imitate what they're doing directly. It's likely not gonna work. So you either need to be able to improve upon something that they're doing, make a better video ad, uh, make a better thumbnail, make a better ad copy, maybe have a better landing page, a better price, etc. Or one of my favorite things is something that I teach to my students all the time is you can take that product and bring it to a specific angle of targeting. So let's say you were selling um, this, this thing right here. You might have one store that is your competitor and they're selling this product um, to everybody, okay? They're selling it to like an extremely broad group of people and they already scaled it like crazy. If you wanted to still have potential with this product, you can make your ad creative and your whole campaign maybe focused on athletes. 
So you target people that go to the gym, you target people that are interested in soccer, basketball, whatever fitness related uh, targeting you want to use, and you make your creative around that. So you can say something along the lines of, um, you know, if you play a lot of sports or if you go to the gym a lot, you're probably experiencing neck pains. This is like the perfect thing to have around your house, etc. And that way you can build a little bit of a connection with the customer and they'll be more likely to convert through your ad than the broad ad just randomly showing the product. I've done this many times with a lot of products and I've seen great success with it, especially um, in the fitness space. So definitely consider that strategy if you're trying to take somebody else's product and run with it. Lastly, um, you can use software like Ecom Hunt, Dropship Spy, and Viral Vault, which is my new software to find trending products. Um, if you want to link to Viral Vault, it'll be down below. It's not open yet, but there's a wait list so you can sign up. I'm not going to talk too much about that. My whole last video is about that. But I am not like a humongous fan of using like this type of software. I think it's a great tool to have in your arsenal because you can have new products to upload each day. And it's great to have, but you can't fully rely on it. And even though I'm creating a software that achieves this, I make it very clear to the people who subscribe that this isn't like a magic pill to product research. It's just something that's going to help you um, along the road. So this is basically all my strategies for spying and trend following, which is what I believe to be one of the best ways to find products to test on your store. Because if something is trending, that means that there's a market there and it's up to you to use your marketing logic to be able to get a piece of the pie on that product so that's the first strategy and now let's move on to the next one so the next one is finding untapped products now finding untapped products is incredible because you can be the first person to bring this product to market and obviously that's going to allow you to have the advantage of all your competitors and if you scale it effectively um, you can be the one to run with it and see success for everybody else so when it comes to finding those products there's a couple things that I do but firstly I want you to understand one thing and it's that you need to be conscious of the state of the world maybe that's worded a little weird so let me explain what I mean you just need to understand like what's going on in society so um, the example that I put right here is a perfect one um, winter is approaching okay so if you go to amazon.com or ebay.com you look at the best-selling items that are in the outdoors niche you're gonna mainly see products that are related to like snow removal or dealing with like snow or problems that come along with that season so as a marketer, you have to understand what is going on in the world, understand the problems that come along with that, and then find products that fill in that gap. One of my students had great success this summer selling a windshield uh, visor thing to block the sun out of the car. They started promoting that product in January, preparing for the summer. They were ahead of the curve and they got to scale that product and make good off of that. I think they made like 300K off of that one product. So. This is the things that you need to be focusing on if you're trying to find those untapped products. Just understand what's going on in society and see if you can find products around that space. Another thing you can do, and this is still directly correlated to that first point, but I really like to use Amazon bestsellers and movers and shakers to kind of get an idea of what is going on in the world. Um, you can a lot of times really kind of see what people are buying. Like I remember in January and February, there was a lot of grilling products on the market that people were buying, people were really interested in. And this is things that you cannot ignore. You have to understand that if people are buying this type of product, you can get your slice of that as well. You just have to be creative about it. So figure out what's going on, figure out what type of products are selling in that specific realm, and then try to go on AliExpress and find a similar product, or maybe even a better product that has yet to be released to the public and run with that one. So another good thing that I like to do to find untapped products, and I don't really see anybody talking about this. Um, actually, Beast of Ecom mentioned it before, so shout out to him. But um, when it comes to finding like those top selling products, what I mean is just going on like the Facebook feed and going on these other top stores and just figure out their winners and then go over to AliExpress just like this. And then what you can do is you can click on the supplier store themselves. I don't really know what this supplier is gonna have. This isn't the best example, but you can go to their new arrivals or their newest items. This supplier has nothing. But a lot of times you can find products here that have yet to be launched or be promoted. And this is one of my favorite things to do because you're gonna be able to see things that other people haven't seen yet. This is an awful list of products, but you just need to go through and find other suppliers and you can keep doing this. But you can take it a step further by actually sending the supplier a message and letting them know, hey, look, I own a, a e-commerce business. And if you're new, you should inflate your numbers because they won't take you serious if you say, I'm a new e-commerce person, send me products. 
just just front just be like hey look um, I have an e-commerce store making six figures a month um, and I'm just looking for new products to add to my collection I'm curious if you have anything new that you're about to release and if you could share that with me or you can ask them hey is there any items that are selling really well for you right now could you share them with me I can potentially make you a lot more money they're gonna see what's in it for them and they're gonna help you out as well I found winners doing that multiple times and like I said it's not a strategy that many people talk about so when it comes to finding products, those are really the two key strategies that I follow. Um, just trend following and spying on other stores and then also searching for those untapped products. So that pretty much wraps it up for product research. Um, now I want to talk to you guys about like the blueprint and the actual strategy for launching the products and scaling them to get to that 50k plus mark. So what I suggest to you is let's say you want to start uh, for November. It's, it's October 26th right now. I would say if you were working with me one on one, if you were my student, the assignment that I would give you would be to compile a list of 10 to 20 products using those uh, product research strategies and those prerequisite advice that I provided for you. And from there, you would want to be testing three to five products a week. Don't worry, I'm not going to leave you at that. We're going to talk about the testing strategy in a minute. But I would definitely be testing three to five products each week. One of the things that I see a lot of people struggling with when they're first starting out is that scarcity approach where they only test one product a week or maybe even less than that. That's going to make things go so much slower for you. You're not going to be learning as fast as you can, and it's going to take you way longer to find a winning product. So you have to be comfortable with testing aggressively when you launch these products. Also. Another thing that many people don't do, which really bothers me, is that they're not being critical about every single product launch that they do. And this was one of the biggest game changers for me and why I was able to find success so fast in my business. When I was first starting, I was basically like shooting blind, basically with my eyes covered, just product, product, product. Once I realized I was losing money left and right, I probably had lost like $2,000 at this point, maybe about a thousand. I said, I need to figure something out. I need to figure out why I'm losing this money. So I went back and I looked at all the products that I launched and I noticed a few trends that stayed the same along all of them. I noticed that I wasn't using proper thumbnails. I noticed that there was really bad issues with my ad copy and I went back and I was able to improve upon those things. And after my next couple of product launches, I saw better results. A lot of people are just launching products and not analyzing what they just did. And that's the whole reason that you launch a product in the first place is to get some data and feedback um, on what you've created. And if you're not leveraging that data, you're wasting your money. That's the only time I would say you're wasting money on ads is if you're not using that data to make your business run better or improve your operations overall. So make sure that you're critical about each product. Um, I put a couple points here about um, analysis and I, I broke down analysis a little bit more in depth uh, down here but if you're not seeing any link clicks on your ad um, you need to improve the ad itself the ad creative the ad copy and the thumbnail that is where you should focus on first if you're getting a lot of link clicks but no sales you need to break down your funnel because there's something wrong in there if you're getting lots of visits with no add to cart there's a couple changes that I could suggest to you because that means that people are interested in your product somewhat and they want to get the product but something is stopping them from buying it so you can't just say like oh, okay this thing is a total failure you should break down what you can change to potentially fix that so you can lower your price you can improve your product description you can check your page load speed and you can go from there so this is like the blueprint that I said that you should follow and now I kind of want to talk to you guys about the actual testing strategy um, that you could use in your uh, store let me just make sure that everything is still recording okay cool so this is my Facebook ad strategy. This is one of them. Uh, this is like the broad strategy that I teach a lot of people. I have other strategies, but this is the one that I consistently see the best results with. So I'm gonna share this with you guys today. Um, basically, I always suggest to optimize for website conversion purchase. And people always ask me why I suggest this. I'll give you guys a quick breakdown of it. Essentially, when you select a conversion objective, Facebook is going to use all the data that it's acquired to go out there and find somebody that is most likely to complete that conversion. So let's say you pick view content as your conversion. Facebook is gonna find the people that click on a lot of ads, that view a lot of content, so to speak, and it's gonna show the ads specifically to them. That's why you're gonna be able to see cheaper link clicks and cheaper cost across the board on that but it's lower quality traffic as opposed to when you're launching for purchase, which will sometimes give you more expensive link click costs and a little higher CPMs, but higher quality traffic because Facebook is going after those people who have shown to have buyer's intent and have purchased items in the past. 
and that is why I always suggest to optimize for website conversion purchase and also too if you start with page post or if you start with view content everybody always says you should start and then you should go up to purchase what's the point why don't you just go to purchase anyways save yourself the the money and the time of doing that and just see how the product is going to perform you don't have to take those extra steps launch straight to purchase for the location I like to use ePacket countries or tier one countries. Um, I like to do broader targeting because it gives me cheaper CPMs and also it doesn't limit you to one specific location. When you're just launching in the US, you're gonna have some crazy high CPMs, but also you would never know if the product is gonna be a hit in Australia or if it's gonna be a hit in Canada. And a lot of times our products don't really hit off in the US like crazy. Most of the products we scale, we scale out to those foreign countries like out in Europe and such. So definitely test broader on your locations. Some people would debate back and forth with me on this, but that's, that's what's worked best for me. That's what worked for my students, so that's what you should do for a location. Oof, I need a water real quick. <laughs> um, after you set up the conversion objective and the location, for the budget, I like to use like $5 to $10. $5 budgets work just fine, but they're just a little slower. Uh, it takes a little while for you to actually get some accurate feedback because you're barely spending any money on your ads. Uh, so like I said, 5 to 10 If you're on a low budget, just do 5 It still works just fine. And if you've got 10 bucks to spend on each budget, go for it. Age and gender. We just leave it broad, um, unless it's like a specific product where you know a certain age and gender is gonna buy it. Like we'll say like like a beauty product. Okay, you can narrow it down by women. I really wouldn't narrow age that much ever. There's no point because Facebook is gonna optimize to the audience that is the highest performer anyways. So um, yeah, that'll work. My phone is about to die, but it's all good. So um, for the placements, we just do auto placements. Reason for this, same thing. Facebook is gonna optimize for the um, placement that is performing the best so you don't have to worry about that now for the targeting I like to do 10 to 20 audiences per campaign um, broad audiences with like 750k plus size and this is something I want to explain real quick when I say three to four angles I mean pick like groups of people that would potentially be interested in this product so let's loop back around to that like massage pillow okay if I was gonna pick angles for that product we'll pick three the first one I would pick is like people who are interested in like relaxation. Okay, so we would pick relaxation as angle number one. Angle number two would be like fitness, people that are athletes, people that are working out, etc. And then angle number three would be people that like talk about like uh, neck pain and like chiropractors, etc. So we would pick those angles and then we would pick the broadest targeting for that angle. So for relaxation, we would probably just put the, sh the word relaxation for the targeting and then use the suggestions tool to fill out audiences that are similar to that angle, okay? And I like to fill out three to five audiences, basically enough to get to this 10 to 20 audiences per campaign mark. The reason why I do so many audiences in my campaigns is because all you need is one to two winning audiences for a product to actually pop and you can scale it. So the more that you test, the more chances that you'll have to succeed uh, with the products that you launch. So that's pretty much breakdown on targeting. I also just do one day click. It doesn't really matter, but people always ask me about that. And then uh, video ads for most products. If it's a video, if it's a product that needs some explanation, like any explanation at all, like this massager, like this picture doesn't really do it justice. If the product needs to be shown, um, definitely do a video ad. But if it's something really simple, like, uh, like something like this, like a case or like some glasses or something. You could just tell right away what it is. You could just use a photo ad. Photo ads work fine. All right, so that is the testing strategy. That's what you should do. So once you launch the campaign, um, how are you going to uh, analyze it? And how are you going to determine to keep it running or kill the campaigns? So I wrote down this uh, ad analysis hierarchy, as I call it. And this is essentially like the things that I look at in order of importance. So we'll let the ad run for at least 12 to 24 hours uh, before we do this analysis. And after that, the first thing that we're looking for is sales and return on ad spend. Um, I put this here and I'll loop back around to that in a second. But essentially we're looking for two to three sales in the first 48 hours with above a four X return on ad spend. On top of that, um, this is what I mean when I say overall issue. If you're seeing issues on this, there's issues across the board. Your ad is not good, your store is not good, things need to be changed. So you need to go deeper and figure out what the problems are specifically. And that's what I put this here for. So the second thing that you're gonna check is the cost per click and the clicks themselves. If you're not getting 
this if you're getting cpcs above two dollars and not seeing the results that you want there's an issue with your creative and your copy and that's what you need to improve to fix that um, another thing as well uh, when inside of this creative it's also a thumbnail issue if you don't have a good thumbnail it's going to be way harder to get this optimized and then the next thing that i look at is the cpm so if the cpm is above thirty dollars that's pretty bad you don't want it to be that way and if it is the things that you need to fix are your creative and copy and also your targeting, the audience that you're sending this out to. So after that, um, the next thing that I look at is just add to carts and checkouts. Um, really, I've just focused on this right here. Okay, If this isn't right, then we just need to go through all these and break them down. But this is the main thing that I'm looking for. So this is where your eyes should always default to. So anyways, um, let's keep moving forward. Now I want to talk about the scaling strategy. Uh, when you find one that actually starts to work, how can you scale it up to get to that 50K mark? Um, it's, it's quite simple. I have a couple strategies to talk about. By the way, we're almost done with this. There's just a couple things after this scaling strategy. So if you stuck around this long, I can tell you serious about your stuff and I appreciate you. But um, for the prior scaling strategy, if you have a 4X return on ad spend and two to three sales, like I said right here, um, in the first 40 hours, you should attempt to scale your product. So these, are not synonymous. I don't even think that is the right word to say. Basically, I'm saying you should not do these at the same time. I did these in order of how I would do them. So if I had a $10 or $5 ad set working with this type of stats, I would duplicate the ad set and leave the low budget one running. I would duplicate the ad set to $30. And then I would let that $30 one run for 24 to 48 hours and see how the performance was, okay? And if that ad set worked good, then I would continue scaling by duplicating and increasing the budget. I would probably go from 30 to 100, and then I would see how the 100 would perform. And usually we cap it out at 100 because budgets higher than that don't typically see good performance for us. Unless at the $100 level, it has like a 5X plus return ad spend, then you could push it a little bit more. Um, also, if this doesn't work, and a lot of times I see people struggling with duplicating the higher budgets. This second strategy will typically work better for you. So you can duplicate your testing ad set with the same budget five to ten times. Basically just kind of spreading that ad set across multiple variables. What this is going to do is just launch more ads to that same group of people. And it's going to try to find those winning pockets of audiences. This is a great way to scale if you're not seeing success with upping the budget. And then if this doesn't work, then you could just use your breakdown tool to get a better understanding of who is actually viewing this content, who is actually interested in the product. And then you can narrow down and try to scale by creating new ad sets with those um, demographics. So this is basically it that I follow. And you can do all three of these things, okay? You can duplicate um, multiple times after you have increased the budget, but this is just the priority that I put them in. So. After you've got a product that actually had some success with that initial scaling and it's profitable, you need to start diversifying. So you don't want to put all your eggs into one basket or one ad set in this case. Um, you want to really try to spread it out as much as you can. So you need to launch lookalike audiences. If I talk about lookalike audiences, this video will be 15 minutes longer than it is already. Go watch my 30 minute long video about lookalike audiences if you want to understand my strategy for lookalike audiences. Lookalikes are the most powerful way to scale in my opinion and one of the quickest ways to just blow your store up like crazy. Um, you also need to be testing new cold audiences every single day. Typically you want to be testing new angles and also finding more audiences within the angles that were winning already. And then you want to launch retargeting which I also have a full in depth video on that as well. If y'all didn't tell, I make a lot of videos about this stuff. So after that, uh, a couple more things to understand. If you can create your own content, you're very much more likely to be able to scale the products like explosively. Uh, one of my students and people that I was working with, they had a product that was selling, they did like 100K a month off of it, which is cool. But then when they made their own video, they hired EcomViz and they got the video going. Nobody else could copy their content. They had the best video out there for the product. And he actually ended up making about a million dollars on the product in like six and a half weeks, which is fucking insane excuse my language but that shit is crazy and that is what it takes once you find a winner is to just try to like get your own side of things get everything handled so nobody else can come and just steal your product right away so that's the whole strategy i'm not gonna like sit here and talk over all this again but i'll scroll through all this in case you want to take a screenshot of anything while i take a sip of this water because my throat hurts <laughs> 
yeah so that's pretty much my whole strategy and if you if you have been listening to me and you've been taking notes on this and you actually apply this stuff i can pretty much guarantee that you will see results um is no doubt in my mind this strategy works this is the exact strategy that i would use this is what i teach my students and most of them are seeing success so you know you're in good hands with me but i want to talk about a couple things before i wrap this video up because i'm tired i've been talking for like 20 minutes now the key to finding success with dropshipping is consistency, okay? If you're not launching products on a consistent basis, if you're not launching multiple products a week, it's gonna be so much harder for you to find a winning product. I can guarantee that for you. But not only being consistent, but being critical with everything you launch and trying to focus on improvement with each campaign that you launch. So you need to look at why your products failed or why they succeeded. Use that information to improve your next stuff that you launch, okay? Also, you need to understand that trust is the most important factor in this game because we're pretty much relying on cold audiences, people that have never heard of us before in their lives and trying to get them to come and buy from our store. The only way that happens is with trust. So you have to try to build trust. And the way to build trust is the prerequisites. And that's why I started with these. You need a good store. You need to be able to create good video ads. So final notes before we wrap this thing up. After you scale and you find a winner, you need to handle the supply chain. So to do that, start working with an agent and fulfillment center in China to handle your orders. I made a whole video about this, like stop working with AliExpress. I have no idea why that video got so many dislikes. I think people got their feelings hurt when I disrespected their business model or something, but you should not use AliExpress when you're scaling your campaigns. It's idiotic. It's a stupid way to run your business. So you should find a manager or an agent in China. Um, my one that I use is One E-Commerce, uh, Jackie Howe. I'll put his link in the description down below. And they work extremely well. They can handle large quantities of volume and is a real professional team. So. That's what you need to do once you find your winner. Second, use the profits that you make from your business not to buy a new car, not to you know go get some Gucci. Use it to reinvest into your business so you can actually continue to scale. Hire employees, systemize everything. Camera stop recording. Anyways, um, hire employees, systemize everything that you can, and reinvest into your business. And when, you, when I mean by systemize, your whole product testing strategy, take that, write it down, make a video on it, teach it to somebody else, and then you can test three to five products a day if you have the budget to do it, and you don't have to do any of the work, except for launching the ads. So, last point, and then I'm gonna go. The only way that you're really gonna fail in this game is if you, is if you quit. Wait, no, that does not make any sense. The only way you will ever really fail is if you quit. People will start this business, any business for that matter, they'll hit a roadblock or a speed bump along the way, and that will derail them and cause them to stop and lose the motivation that they had for starting in the first place. You have to realize that failure is like part of it. Failure is the thing that's gonna bring you success. So you need to be prepared for that failure. Use that failure to your advantage as a learning lesson and improve upon that. So that was a lot of stuff. I told you guys I was gonna come back with some content like this. I delivered, hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for sticking around to the end. We're probably coming up on 30 minutes or so now, so appreciate you for watching this whole thing. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below. Also, this video, it pretty much gives a full strategy that you can follow, but it's kind of like theory based, right? Like this is just like text based and like I'm not really showing how to create the stuff or anything specific. So if you're looking for a more specific guide, uh, showing live examples, showing um, real case studies on how this stuff is done, check out my 0 to 100 program in the link down below. Um, it's really comprehensive. We have successful students that are crushing it. My most successful student right now is doing about 250K a month. So this stuff works, you guys can apply it. But enough sales, enough talking. I'm tired, I got stuff to do today. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you all in the next video. I hope you have a great weekend. Peace.